Okay, now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into Gibbs energy. What I'm about to do, you can also do with a Helmholtz energy, but I want you to know, and when you're following along with this, this is a skill you should have after you see this. Um, and I encourage you to be able, or you should be able to do this, um, like in your homework problems and stuff um, when you're dealing with the thermodynamic potentials. Okay, so we're going to explore a little bit deeper. I want to write this out with what I know these uh, relationships are. So G is H minus TS. What is H? U plus PV minus TS. So this is the expression for the Gibbs energy now when we expand the enthalpy. All right, so now I want to take DG and that's going to be equal to DU plus PDV plus VDP minus TDS minus S DT. I hope you followed along. That's chain rule to its finest. Um, and so you've got our, I guess, product rule. Um, so uh, you've got DU, so plus quantity PV. If you want to look at the change of that, you have to look at pressure times the change in volume plus volume times the change in pressure. Same, minus TDS minus SDT. Now I'm going to dive in a little bit closer here and look at first law, which du is equal to dq plus dw. And I'm going to break the work up into two different components. I'm going to call this pressure volume work plus the change in the work, which is non-pressure volume. Because I know when dealing with the Gibbs energy, I'm dealing with uh, expansion work and non-expansion work. Okay, so there's my expansion work and there's my non-expansion work. Okay. And this kind of is nice because I can say this is equal to minus PDV, which is expansion work, plus DW non-pressure volume. Okay, so now I'm going to put this into here, and this is going to be DG is equal to DQ minus PDV plus D work non-PV plus PDV plus VDP minus TDS minus SDT. It's a D. Okay. Hopefully you can already see where I'm going with this. My non-pressure volume or my pressure volume work and my pressure volume work, those are going to cancel out. That's quite glorious. I've also got, what else do I have? Um, pause for a second. Go team. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to state that my system or my process is at constant pressure and temperature. So if delta P is not changing and delta or delta P is zero and delta T is zero, then this simplifies into DQ. So where else? plus DW non-PV work plus VDP, that goes to zero. Um, VDP, that goes to zero, minus TDS minus SDT, that also goes to zero, such that I'm left with DQ plus D work non-pressure volume minus TDS. Okay, for a reversible process, this is equal to TDS for reversible process. So we can go further still and say if we have a reversible process, this equals TDS plus D work non PV minus TDS. Cool. So now, this and this cancel, and I'm left with delta G is equal to the change in the work energy for a non-pressure volume expansion work. Go team! So what's left if you're not doing any expansion work? Chemical! All right, so this is going to be chemical work. Um, and why did I show you this whole ridiculous thing? Just to show you what I'd already defined on the previous video. It's because you need to see how sausage is made. You need to see how these thermodynamic potentials arise from these different processes 
held at constant pressure, constant volume, constant temperature, all these different constant conditions. And then whether or not we define the process to be reversible or not, what this does is it helps us break down in the purest process possible, what is delta G? You will have a Gibbs free energy when the pressure is not constant. You will have a Gibbs free energy when the temperature is not constant. But in defining what these thermodynamic potentials represent, it's crucial that you expand our understanding, see how it changes when you change one or two particular knobs. And when you can reduce it down to just a single parameter, you can say, ah, OK, so that means I can think about delta G then as the work energy that I get out of a system that has that is not originating from expansion. OK, so non-pressure volume work. Um, that is reversible. OK, and likewise, you can do this exact same thing with the Helmholtz energy, and you'll find the Helmholtz energy is the maximum possible work that you can get from a system no, with no criterion associated with non-PV or not. Um, so the maximum work, Helmholtz. The maximum non-expansion work, Gibbs. Go team. OK.